Uh, my report on community health and economic prosperity has been in the works for uh, several years before this pandemic. Uh, and even before the coronavirus pandemic, we knew the health of Americans wasn't as good as it could be and was worse than the health of people in other wealthy nations, even as we pay more for health care than any other nation in the world. You all know as employers that health care for most businesses is your number two expense. And so we call this the U.S. health disadvantage, the fact that we pay more and get less uh, for what we're paying than any other country. And America's poor health status is, uh, inflicts costs on people, families, businesses, and on society. Uh, COVID-19 has exposed additional cost of the U.S. health disadvantage as the virus has claimed more lives among those with certain underlying conditions and has disrupted our economy significantly to the extent that even access to healthcare coverage was diminished in a country uh, where we uniquely provide a significant proportion of our uh, health care coverage through employers. Millions of people lost employer-sponsored health insurance. Uh, the U.S. health disadvantage increases healthcare costs, but it also lowers productivity and competitiveness and compromises business success and growth. And so uh, what I want people to understand is that if businesses allow themselves to continue to be pitted against health or uh, say that it's not my business to get into the business of promoting community health, then we're not going to just see individual health suffer. We're going to see uh, business bottom line suffer. And the Business Roundtable talked about this uh, a year ago when they uh, changed their focus from shareholder return to looking at stakeholder return. Well, guess what? COVID again has laid this bare. <clears throat> when you look at stakeholders, if you don't have healthy supply chains, if you don't have consumers who actually can go out and buy your products, if you don't have a workforce who can come in and actually do the job, uh, all these are part of you being successful as businesses. And so my Community Health and Economic Prosperity Report really helps businesses understand how the health of the community impacts their business bottom line but it also gives examples of companies that are finding unique ways to contribute to community health. Uh, Belden is a company in Richmond, Indiana, for instance, that uh, found that they were having to interview dozens and some, in some cases hundreds of people to fill a job because not enough people could pass the drug screen. So instead of going interview, interview, um, uh, uh, you get the job, you fail the drug screen, and we start all over again, they screen people up front. And if people uh, fail the drug screen, they've connected them with community um, organizations that can get them into treatment and recovery. And if they're successful in treatment and recovery, then they, are, uh, they, they, they save a job for them. And they found that the employees who complete this program actually miss less work than people who don't have a substance use disorder. Uh, yeah. Another, uh, another uh, 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 example is Grayston Bakery in, um, in New York. Grayston, uh, up to 70% of their employees, about 70% are people who are uh, formerly incarcerated. Uh, they've uh, put a social worker on site to help these individuals develop life skills. And again, they found that their uh, absenteeism and their turnover rate is lower than what other comparable companies are. And that is more than paid for the social workers and the life skills coaching that they're providing on site. So again, thinking outside the box, uh, but recognizing that the health of the community and the health of individuals in the community ultimately impacts your healthy bottom line. 